Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Stood right now is uh, Thomas Dale, comic playing Caroline this weekend. What's up, buddy? How you doing, buddy? How's it going? Good to see you, man. Yeah, man. I'm happy to be here. So you're from Long Island. Yep. And you just made the move to L.A. Yeah. And you live in, you said, Silver Lake. Silver Lake. Love that it. area. Yeah. Now, compared to Long Island, what part of Long Island are you from? Uh, Valley Stream. Oh, okay. It's like the border of Queens and Long Island. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. So you like, I mean, is it a major difference? I love it. It's it's a very big difference. It's like night and day. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, listen, I'm a New York boy. I'll always love it here. But ever since I moved out there, I'm like an orphan that was picked up by rich family, you know? I love it. I'm running around. I'm hiking in mountains. It's like, it's See, amazing. I never, that never happened to me. I never got the, I lived there for six years. And I, and I had buddies like that, too. Yeah. Well, I thought my other friends of mine, <laughs> I never thought, like, I ever, like, did one exercise in their life besides playing softball. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're hiking. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm like, where, 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 hiking? It's, I never thought that I would have, I, I, I'm up there. I'm like, what, I got, I got a stick. I'm a doing stick. it. Yeah. <laughs> like, You're like Moses. I swear. If there a, lot was of broad, a lot of broads hiking. That you mean a lot of broads hiking. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. I yeah, don't know. it's great. That's <laughs> great stuff. Uh, well, uh, did you ever do that out there? You lived in California hiking? A little bit. Yeah. yeah you did? I, definitely. I lived well, you were right an NFL by... player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I lived you by... You need uh... to hike. You're probably too tired to hike. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is a runner, and I lived right next to a, a state park, Tilden Park, the, where we would go. And she ran around the park? She would run. I would ride a bike or I would hike and we would walk together. Oh, that sounds really Would you really ride a bike nice. while she was running? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty awesome. Just to get away from her. <laughs> no, man. I was trying to keep up. She's a, yeah, she was Wait, a college. You couldn't, you couldn't ride a bike as fast as she could run? She was a college runner, man. Wow, she ran a cow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. She wow. has rec a record there still. What is that? This 3,000 meter steeplechase. She's still the record holder at at Cal. She holds a record at Cal for track. Yeah. That's wow. impressive. Yeah. Oh, that wow. is pretty good. So I was, yeah. Yeah. I was doing like everything Olympic I could. That's status, though. Yeah. So she could, like, if you ch had a running a race, she could just wipe the walls with you? Uh, Even you were in the NFL. If it yeah. went past 40 yards, I think. That's awesome. Went. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, she's, yeah, she's incredibly fit. Uh, so now, do you uh, do you partake in like the clubs out there, like Largo and stuff? Do you do the alternative clubs? Um, I've been. I mean, I've been. You know, I've been get. I've been doing the Comedy Store and Laugh Factory and the Improv. Um, I've been. You know, I broke into a couple. I'm breaking into the alt scene. The alt scene yeah. is very like you have to like. You know, you got to like maneuver your way in, and you have to know the right people. And I do, but. I just got on the Chelsea Lately show, so I've been doing that. Right, that's so good. I really was, that must helped out, I'm sure, right? That helped out a lot. That, yeah. like, popped everything off. But it, it at first, I was writing on it, so I didn't have time to really go and do spots at night because it was, like, full-time job. Well, any help that, uh, any inroad you made into the alternative comedy scene with Chelsea Lately will be ruined here with this appearance. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like diversity, you know? I like so, be, it's good that you're doing both. Though. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, that was just starting to get a foothold when I was out there, like that Largo place and everything. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's weird. It's like you don't know what. Well, it's all comedy to me. You know, so people say well, alternative comedy, regular comedy. What yeah. do you think of the comedy store? That's a place, though. The comedy store. You feel like the ghosts of the seventies are in that. I love it. I think building. it is so. It's so cool. Like the comedy yeah. store. It like it reminds me of like an adult theater for like comedians. Right. Like you know, and I've I've, I've only seen an adult theater once with friends. We went in jokingly. <laughs> right. so I've never been in there. <laughs> I've never seriously been in there. Well, the gag. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're like, oh, what's in there? Like in Times Square, and you go in, and it's all it's like a fun house with yeah, just all, yeah, yeah. you know kinds of. I used to play. I, I, I did that trick a couple times. Before. Yeah, exactly. Like you go in with your friends, and it's just like you're all like a bunch of idiots while some guy's really trying to do his thing. Right? <laughs> and you're like just a bunch of jerks. And you're the normal guy going, "This is ridiculous." Yeah, right. and that's what the comedy store is like. For comedy. You go in these weird things, it's like just people are being weird and shady. There's not, all no. different rooms. Yeah, yeah there's all different there's rooms. There's mirrors up in it. That is yeah. true. Yeah. Like the belly room, you go upstairs and there's like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, there? exactly. Like right. there's just people lurking in corners and stuff. It's an odd, it's an odd, like I say, it's trapped in the 70s. It definitely is, which is a cool, I look at, like I look, watch a lot of documentaries about, and I read biographies about like the 70s comedy right. and I think it's incredible. I, I love, love it. Too, yeah. well, I that, that, that where that, the comedy store actually stands on a pl plot of land. Yeah. Yeah. Where the restaurant Ciro's used to be. Oh, okay. And that was in the 50s and 60s. That's where Sinatra, the rap pack. Yeah. Ate. So the, the top of La Cienega by the Sunset Strip. Uh, so it's like a legendary plot of land. You know? Yeah. Uh, 
that. Well, apparently they had like hands in like like Jamie, the booker at Laugh Factory. Apparently he had like Sada, some, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like some doings with like Sinatra and all that. Oh yeah, he's a connected guy. Yeah, well, he yeah. owns a Laugh Factory and he's he's got great stories. Yeah. Well, Jamie's the guy who introduced you know the the kid who sued Michael Jackson for twenty million dollars. Oh, okay. The molestation thing. Right, right, right. Jamie introduced that kid to Michael Jackson. Get out of here. <laughs> Jamie went on like a publicity tour because of it. <laughs> That's amazing. Because I'm the guy who introduced him. Yeah. He used to do a thing called comedy for cancer kids or something. I've heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and uh, the Laugh Factory comics would uh, do stand up for these kids and yeah. teach the kids how to do stand up. And celebrities would show up. And Michael Jackson showed up one day. Yeah. And he introduced the kid to Michael Jackson. <laughs> the kid who ended up suing him. <laughs> I guess got maybe ten million dollars. Yeah. Out of him. That's not bad. <laughs> Touch me. <laughs> ten million dollars. <laughs> what now? Uh, so what's your goal though? You want to be like on a sitcom and everything? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, my goal is like, I mean, I want to do stand up, you know, forever. I want to be able to just sell out, co you know, co um, comedy clubs and tour and do all that. But I would love to have a sitcom, have my own show. And then, you know, do movies and stuff. But I want people to see, know that they're coming to see, like, Thomas Dale. Like, like yeah. Richard Pryor, they went to go see Richard Pryor or you. Like, they know that it's you. Right, They're right. going to get that in the movie. You want a connection. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's the, you're the persona. So right, that's right, what right. I want to do. And that's what I'm going to be with my career. You got to connect with the crowd. That's the most Yeah, fun. exactly. Like, you're yeah. giving yourself to them. Yeah, the, the Boschetti there is doing the same thing. Boschetti's going out there. Now, Mike, do you think you could hook up with Thomas out there? Uh, Thomas is very nice. Actually, we have a couple of mutual friends. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, Joel. Yeah, Joel Richardson. So, Todd, do you uh, do you plan on just? Uh, I mean, we could take this as a commitment. Then, when Mike goes out there, you'll drive him around. Oh yeah, let's do it. <laughs> hey, buddy, cool. you're from Long Island. Is awesome too. I love it out there. I think you're from Jim Brewer's part of, of uh, Long Island. Actually, Jim Brewer went to my high school. There you go, Valley oh, wow. Street. Right? Yeah, he went. To, I went to Valley Street Central. He went to my high school. We're so. looking for someone to actually drive Mike around. You don't do laundry. You don't do his laundry. Do you know no, I don't do who laundry. <laughs> My own, but. Well, what about that now? Do you know any places? Now, Mike, what about fluff and fold for laundry? Sounds good. You know, whatever. It costs some money, but who cares? It's you not that much money. Cash. Yeah, you're making big dough now. <laughs> Listen, you pay me. You can get whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you had money. Now it's a different story. Hey, <laughs> listen, he doesn't even know what a cashier's check is, all right? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's going I, out there. I think a lot of people don't. No, Mike, everybody everybody over the age of 15, I guarantee, knows what a cashier's check is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Do you think a lot of people don't know what a cashier's well, check is? Well, I know what a cash is, of course, a money order, a check. I just, you know, I heard of it, but I never dealt with one. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone else worried for Mike no, that he's going no, out to do gigs and he doesn't know what a cashier's check is? No, no, but I'm saying, the, And he's 52 years old. Oh, uh, what a cashier's <laughs> check. He doesn't know what a cashier's check what is? a cashier's check. Sometimes people have to sign for one, right? That's the kind of check, it's the same thing. Well, the cashier, what, it, the cashier check is when you ask the bank for. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like actual money. We'll go into it. It's like actual money. You don't want to, you know, you, like, you don't want the guy giving it to you to explain it to you. No, but it's, it's, no. Better, it's like a money order, right? It's it's in that league, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> You've dealt with a money order before. Yeah, I love them. Oh. <laughs> okay, so 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 we'll get you guys hooked up and everything will be fine. Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna want to drive with me though because uh, my dad taught me how to drive and he was a, a cop in Brooklyn. Oh yeah. So oh. my dad like used to make me do when I was like 16. He used to make me do drills that right. the cops did. Uh -huh. I used to have to do like figure eights backwards going at like 70 miles an that hour. That the cops did? That the cops did. And I was 16 years old and I was doing it in a caravan too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but now they complain that I've gotten, in, I get into like an accident a year. Like, my, you know, so I'm like, you told Stunt me how to drive driving. like a cop. That's the way to teach a kid how to drive, I guess, like a cop. Yeah, but if you're looking to catch perps. <laughs> <laughs> what made him do that? Like, he thought that would be like. that's all my dad, that my dad is in the cop mentality. That's it. He's constantly, like, when we go to to eat, he has to sit facing the door. He has to right. see who's coming in constantly. It's like nuts. What now? Is he still a cop or retired? Now he's um he's a private investigator. He works. I can't actually say where he, what job he's doing right now, right. but he's that. He's does he does he like what you chose for a living? Uh, now he does. Now that he sees everybody else likes what right. I say. <laughs> in the beginning, they were like, my dad's like, maybe you should do those jokes Jay Leno does. All oh, right. <laughs> I was like, no, dad. And I, so he's like, he's more. Well, what kind of stuff do you do? I talk about everything. You know, I talk about. About being Italian, I talk about coming from a, a Long Island family. Right. Uh, my parents are from Brooklyn. I talk about being gay. I right. talk about straight people, but I don't talk about being gay. I talk about 
my perception of straight people. But I didn't even know you were gay. You just said it. So well, exactly. That's part, yeah, that's part of your act. I'm a I call myself a regular gay, like a portable <laughs> what gay. That, what does that like, mean? <laughs> it's I'm a portable gay. Like you could take me places. I'm, uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like palatable for straight people. Oh, you know? that's good. That's, yeah. that's a good point. <laughs> well, I was just I don't. I, yeah, whatever. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm I'm I don't have daddy issues, you know. <laughs> so now, would your father being a cop for Brooklyn Italian was that hard for him to forget about the comedy oh, yeah. part? How did you come out to him? I told. Well, um, I just my mom told him. Some Somebody told my mom because I was going through depression about it. Like I wasn't. I it's had rough, to, right? Yeah, it was very rough. That I, sucks. I didn't. Yeah, I had to accept it. And like I never felt like I fit in with gay people, and I didn't know where I fit. So now, I how really, old were you when you were going through this? Um, I was going through it from like 16 to until I came out at 18. But I knew when I was nine, so I went through it basically. So you were, we had a kid Jeez. in here uh, yesterday. Yeah. Another comic. Yeah. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before? Said it's three days. and a, three and a half years old. He knew. And yeah. I was like, no, but three and a half. Who knows? Whatever. I was going. Yeah. Nothing's going on. Well, I think. Yeah, that's that's a uh, lot. Well, how'd you find out at nine? Like happened? my first feelings weren't sexual feelings. I was I was emotionally attracted to a guy. So oh. that's the sexual stuff came when I hit puberty, just like all of the rest. Well, of what us. do you mean, like nine, like at nine years old? What do you like, mean? Like I was on um I was on a, I was on a soccer team, and we were having a soccer sleepover. Right. And we were all like in slumber bags, and I like what there was a a, a boy on my um, team that I liked emotionally. Yeah. So I wanted to I went to like lay down next to him. Right. And he like left my party <laughs> and oh, I was good. like oh shoot this is not going to be a good life but how did you <laughs> how did you sort of express that though I just hu went in like hugged like nuzzled up like snuggling snuggling right, yeah right right and he was like what are you doing and just like left oh, and God. went outside and made you know like and then like this is not going to be a good this is, life. I was like oh shoot I was like uh oh so so and then you come out at 16 I came out um at 18 six, at 18 to everybody slowly like through with friends and stuff um, I always had girlfriends. I was homecoming king. Did you lose your virginity to a girl? Never. I've never had inter sex with a girl. You okay? I've That's never. Right. I've only had one partner, like sex with one guy too. I don't have just. I, and is this a guy you're currently seeing now? No, or? it was an ex-boyfriend that I okay. had. Like. This the gayest part about me is probably the fact that I only have sex be if I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> that is gay. That's the gayest thing about no me. So, so you've had only sex with one person. One person. And, yeah. whole life. and how many times did that happen? Um, we were together for three years, so okay. it was consistent. All right, all right. Yeah. And uh, so, when's the last time you had sex? When did that break? When did um, well, since I started comedy, comedy, I always say saved my life because before that, I was on a really bad road. Drugs and all that kind of thing. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was just, I was, I was in, in rehabs and mental. I like had nervous mental breakdowns and all this other stuff. Whatever. Me too. Yeah, it was, it was pretty. It was. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So and I didn't, you know, I come from a really good family, so it didn't make sense to everybody. And um, once I started comedy, I got on that stage and I felt like it's therapeutic. I found myself. I felt whole. That's I felt great. like I had something that m was meaningful. So ever since I haven't stopped thinking about it or doing it, or I, I think about it, my, it's my whole life. Can't stand up. Now you get back mm -hmm. to your father. Was how long was he accepting? Of um, well, he in the beginning he negotiated the terms like any good cop. Like <laughs> yeah. he was like, "You're by." He was like trying to meet me halfway. <laughs> he was shy. He's like, "I'll give you a little bit." <laughs> right. I was right, like, "I'm right. not by at all." <laughs> yeah. uh, trust me, I've been with girls. <laughs> you know, like I've done the oral stuff. You know, and it was just it I, wasn't working out. I don't. I thought it was gonna bite my hand off that right. makes alive down there. <laughs> I was like, if you're Whoa. lucky, if you're lucky, <laughs> yeah, if you're lucky. <laughs> uh, well, I was so, so, but then eventually he came around. It sounds like you have a good relationship. I have, my dad's an amazing father. Oh, um, good. He just good. wants me, you know, he said, this is a tough life you're choosing, but later on in the years, I, he realized you're not choosing. Well, yeah, he, I think meant, and what I said to him was later on, I said, I've realized what you meant by that. And what you meant was I'm choosing to be honest with who I am. And right. that is a tough life for anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, to be honest with who you are is a mm -hmm. tough life for anyone, and it's a choice. Sure. I can't be somebody else, so I am choosing to be honest with who I am, and that is tough. Right now, well, that's well what he yeah, meant. no, the, the honesty part. Well, the that's on but it's brave, is what it is. But I mean, to be gay is, I, you know, like, once people realize, oh yeah, you it's, know, it's, it's not a choice. I mean, that, no that, way. It helps it's you ridiculous. accept it. It helps you accept it more. Yeah. And nobody should understand that more than a straight guy. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> that, yeah. is, that is not a choice. Well, I often say, any straight guy who thinks it's a choice obviously was faced with one at one point. So that's a little. You know, that's what I mean. Yeah. So maybe you know that's your own thing. There's and no choice to make exactly. for most people. For most 
most people, you know you're attracted to women. So there are some guys who probably were attracted to both, and they felt like they chose to, be, yeah, to sure. stay straight. Mm -hmm. And, that, and then that, that makes them insecure. And that makes them insecure. Now, what, uh, you have brothers and sisters? I have three sisters, yeah. And I guess they're all cool with it, right? They're all great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, they everybody just wants me to be happy. and yeah, women, you know. are, women, women are more mature with a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. All right, yeah. we got to take a break. And when we come back, remember, Thomas will be at Caroline's uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, through, Friday. Uh, Friday? Mm -hmm. through, through, okay, tomorrow through Friday. Caroline's here in the city, and uh, we'll be back with more of Thomas Dale after these words.